Hi everyone! Now that you had a chance to practice with your single acceptance sampling plans, let's work on how to do those double acceptance sampling plans. Those are a little bit more involved, so I'm going to go through this first with the decision tree of how we actually get to our final accept versus reject decision, and then I'll go over how you actually get all that into Excel to get your single and combined OC curves. So first, let's take a look at our decision tree for a sampling situation. This is the one that's in your notes. Here's our tree. So in this, we have our accept reject criteria down here, where we have on our first sample, our acceptance criteria is one. So if on our first sample, we get one or fewer nonconformities, we can accept. Our first sampling rejection criteria is four. So if we have four or more nonconforming units in our first sample, we have to reject. And that's shown here. So we have an accept decision on our first sample. We have a reject decision on our first sample. But we also have these two situations where we can't make an accept reject decision right away because they're between our accept and reject criteria. So this is where we need to take our second sample. And here's our second bit of information that we need for this sampling plan. Our C2 is 4. And what that means is that we can have a total between our first and second samples of 4 or fewer nonconforming units. Now we need to treat these two cases where we have 2 versus 3 nonconforming units separately because the probabilities work out separately. And it is involved with the calculations of making your combined OC curve. So first let's take a look at you have two nonconforming units in your first sample. You say okay I need sample number two. Now let's say you sample in number two and you end up with a total of three or fewer nonconforming units and that means in your second sample you had one or fewer. So you can have zero or one nonconforming units in your second sample because those have to add together to give you three or less. That's when you can make an accept decision. If in your second sample you get two or more nonconforming units, you already had two in your first sample, so you have to add those to your total to the second sample, and that means you've got four or more. So there's your reject here. Sample two. Four three nonconforming units. Hi everyone. Now that you've had a few days to practice with single acceptance sampling in Excel, let's work on double acceptance sampling. So with this, it's a bit more complicated because you do have two sampling instances. And so it's easier to do everything in Excel if you look at your decision tree first. So before I go over how to do this in Excel, we're going to walk through a sample decision tree to see how all the probabilities of acceptance break down. So this particular tree is in your notes. Here it is. So we've got a double acceptance sampling plan where our first sampling acceptance criteria is one, first sampling rejection criteria is four. So in our first sample, if we have one or fewer nonconforming units, we accept. If we have four or more nonconforming units, we reject. And so that's illustrated up here. But then we do have these two cases that we're going to have some nonconforming units where we can't make that accept reject decision yet. And so that's when we take our second sample. The last piece of information we need to make our final accept reject decision in those cases is our second sampling acceptance criteria. So here C2 is 5 and that means that between samples 1 and 2 we can have a total of 5 nonconforming units and not reject our sample. So your nonconforming units between the first and second sample do add together to give you this particular total. So let's take a look at how that works. We do have to split out two versus three because the way our nonconforming units add together and the way those probabilities work out is not the same and it's going to make a difference in our calculations. So that's why we're taking these separate cases. So if we've got two nonconforming units on our first sample, we say, okay, we got a sample again. So we pull a second sample. If we get three or fewer nonconforming units in this sample, when we add that to the two we already have, 
That's a maximum of five. So we're within our acceptance criteria and we can make an accept decision. But if we get four or more nonconforming units in that second sample, we have to add in that two we already have, so we have six, and that's too high, so we have to reject the lot. Now, with three nonconforming units, these numbers down here change because we start with a higher number of nonconforming units. So this time, if we have two or fewer, we have five or less total, so we can make an accept decision. But if we have three or more nonconforming units in our second sample, we end up with a total of six or more, and so therefore we have to reject. So that's our decision tree for this particular instance. If you change your accept and reject criteria, your decision tree is going to change. Just a warning if you're working on a different sampling plan. So before we head over to Excel, we need to explain, all right, why do we really care about these accept-reject decisions? What does this have to do with the probability of acceptance? Well, when you calculate the probability of acceptance, when you have those two sampling instances, you have more than one place where you can accept that lot. And each of these accept decisions, there's three of them here, they have a different probability. And so when you're making your combined OC curve, you need to add those probabilities together to get your probability of acceptance overall. So that's what your combined OC curve is about, is all the possible instances that you could accept this lot. So let's take a look at how to do that in Excel. All right, here we are. So I've set up this spreadsheet very similar to the single acceptance spreadsheet. Here we have N1 is 50. I just chose 50 as a random sample number for N1. C1 is 1. So that number is in there. And then I said, okay, N2, if we have to pull a second sample, we don't necessarily have to pull the same size sample as N1. Typically, it's a smaller size. So I said N2 can be 20. How this matters is when you're calculating NP0. Because they are no longer the same size, you need to have N1P0 and N2P0. So those numbers are going to be different. Even though P0, the fraction nonconforming in your population, doesn't change, your sample size changes. So that's why you have to have a separate N1 and N2 0. So make sure you have those two columns if your sample sizes are different. All right. I've got my step size here again. I've set it to 0 0.0035 because even though my little chart right here where everything's going to show up is blank, I have calculated this ahead of time and that's actually a good step size to show us our entire OC curve. You'll notice this time we have a legend on our chart. So I have a blue line for our single OC curve and a red line for our combined curve. So. We do have two curves in that double acceptance sampling plan. One is single, the other one's combined. The single curve is calculated exactly like you did the single curve for the single acceptance OC. So let's just type that out real quick. We'll use the Poisson distribution. All right, and then we have our three things to put in. So we have X, which is our acceptance sampling criteria. Um, we'll lock that particular row so it doesn't move when we drag down. Next up is our mean, which is our NP0. Now there's single acceptance sampling curve here. Our single curve is N1P0. We haven't done our second sampling yet. It's a single curve, so we have sampled one time. That's why I'm going to use N1P0. Cumulative, yes, we do want cumulative. All right, so that's that first value. And if I drag down here all the way to the end and scroll back up to our chart, we have our beautiful little blue line here. So there's our single. To make our combined curve, we need to figure out a couple options first. So if you remember back on this little graph over here, our decision tree, we had two options for our second sample. So, we need to reflect that in our probability calculations. Now, this is where your rules of probability come in. So, if you have an AND case, that means you have to multiply your probabilities together. 
If you have an OR case, you add your probabilities together. So, if we say, all right, during our second sampling, going back to this little chart here, we have to have two nonconforming units and three or fewer nonconforming units to make our accept decision. And means multiply. So when we go back to Excel and we calculate our probability of acceptance, we have to multiply those two things together. So let's do that. Here we're going to use our Poisson distribution again. It's going to, instead of saying C1, here we had two nonconforming units. So I'm going to say two, because that's what we had in our NP, N1, P0 population. And then, instead of saying true, we don't want that cumulative population anymore. So what we do want, instead of the cumulative option, is the exact point. Because we know we had exactly two. We didn't have two or fewer. We had exactly two. So I don't want cumulative. So I'm going to write false here. That gives us that point exactly. Now, and means multiply. Working on our second sample now. So here, if we remember, C2 is 5. So here, we can have 3 or fewer nonconforming units. So that's our x. Our mean now is N2, P0. So we're on our second sample. We've got to use N2. OK. And then cumulative, this time we can have three or fewer. So we do want cumulative. So we'll write true here. So we know we had exactly two the first time, therefore we don't want cumulative. We can have three or fewer the second time, so we do want cumulative. So keep that straight when you're writing your own calculations. Okay, that's option one. It's showing up as zero right now, even though all my numbers are in, because that's a very, 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 very teeny little probability that happened because this is rounded. But basically, all of our probability is in the first sample. It is so likely to accept the sample the first time around that you're probably not going to have option one come up very often. So let's do option two. And the best thing to do, what I like to do here, is just copy this entire formula and paste it right in. Because you only have to do a couple of changes. Here, option two is on the first sample we had three instead of two. So I just changed the two to a three here. And that means we can have two or fewer the second time. So I'll just change this three to a two. And everything is now set up correctly. So yay, we've got option one and option two. We can pull those down to finish out the calculations. And you can see here, I will scooch the graph out of the way. But as our percent nonconforming in the population gets bigger and bigger, the probability of us having to take a sample the second time gets bigger and bigger. So that's why you'll see these probabilities go up because the more bad stuff basically you have in your lot, the more likely you are to have something that falls between your accept and reject criteria and therefore you're going to have to take a second sample. Okay, so we're almost ready to make our combined curve now. Remember I said and means multiply or means add. So going back to our little diagram right here, we have three options to accept this happens or this happens or this happens. So now if you're thinking ahead you can see why I have these three columns with Excel that I said okay so this is equal to the probability of acceptance the first time plus the probability of acceptance for option one plus the probability acceptance for option two, because one of these three options will get us an accept decision, but they can't happen at the same time. They're mutually exclusive. So you can just add them all together. So this happens, or this happens, or this happens. So we add them up, 
we get a probability of 1 because we have nothing non-conforming in the lot, so we're always going to accept. But as you can see, if we drag down and our non-conforming in the population gets bigger and bigger, our probability is going to go down a bit. So we're not as likely to accept the lot at higher fractions not conforming than at lower fractions, which makes sense. All right, so our curve for our combined OC is here. Here it is in the red. And you can see it's greater than the blue curve at all instances. And that makes sense if you think about it, because if you have to make that accept rejection on one sample, you are less likely to accept the lot. If you have a second chance to accept that lot, that's going to push your probability of acceptance up. And so this combined curve will always be higher than your single curve. If it goes the other way around, check your calculations. If your probability goes above 1, that's actually not possible. Um, you cannot accept things 110% of the time, for example. 1 or 100% is your upper limit. So that's a good way to check that you've done the calculations right, that you should start at 1 and then it should drop off. So there's how to make a double acceptance sampling curve, your single and combined curve. So as you're going through Excel, it's so easy to make typos here. Just double check everything and feel free to ask me if you have any questions or issues with Excel. I'm happy to troubleshoot by looking at your Excel sheet and figuring out what's going on.